Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Wait till you meet Justin and Eric, the talented duo that has Canine Solutions, a boarding and training center at their new campus in Saint Inez. Then the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, spreads her wings and talks with a bird at the Santa Barbara Bird Sanctuary in Summerlin. And animal artist, Zoe Elliott, shows her creative take on our four-footed friends. So sit back as we ride into the animal zone. Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour, Renaud. Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Well, if I was a dog, I'd want to come here to Canine Solutions in San Inez because they've got boarding, training, daycare, and most of all, fun. So let's go and check it out. So here we are with the owners of Canine Solutions, Eric and Justin, and you guys, thank you for having us up here today. Thanks for having us on Glad the show. To be here, yeah. This is exciting because this is a brand new facility that you've set up, isn't it? Brand new, just a few months old. Wow. And uh, But tell me how it all started. Uh, you were originally in Santa Barbara, weren't you? God, I was in Santa Barbara about um, maybe 18 years ago, went to Brooks to become a photographer, and um, I originally started my dog training career when I was in the military, training police dogs, but then decided to take a detour to photography. Um, then after that, I uh, worked here for a while as a photographer for Santa Barbara Magazine, and then decided to go back to Boston to work, and that's where I also started training dogs again, but in a more like a pet dog trainer. So you got the dogs in focus, so to speak? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and w what inspired you? Did you always been a dog lover? Did you have dogs? Oh, I've had dogs my whole life. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Once you attach to a dog, you never let go. Never. I can't remember the last time I didn't have a dog. Now you have a dog. It's even here, right? He's right there. Yeah. Rocco. Yeah. And how long have you had it? Uh, almost yeah. eight years now. He's a rescue from Boston. Boston from Boston. Uh huh. Yeah. And you know, speaking of rescues, because that's, that's the whole theme of our show, is to help people understand that rescues are a great option when you're thinking of having a pet. How did you zero in on him? Uh, I had just lost my dog about six months prior to getting him and I actually wasn't really ready to get another dog yet because I was really close to the dog I had. The gentleman that I was uh, working with uh, showed him to me and said, you know, you should consider taking this dog. He's a great dog. But he was very dog aggressive and doing what I do, I can't really have an aggressive dog at work. So I decided to rehabilitate him. Um, someone had dropped him off at a groomer's and never picked him up. So uh, I was uh, helping her with him at first and then I decided to take him. And it took me about a year to get him completely rehabilitated to the point where he could be 
like this with other dogs and not be dog aggressive. It just wasn't the dog who he really truly was. And I had to bring that out. I've noticed here at Canine Solutions, you have a lot of dogs here that some of them, I guess, have been dropped off for the day. Right. Take some care. of them are boarders. Mm -hmm. Some of them are learning uh, new tricks. Or right. maybe they're new dogs learning old tricks. I don't know. <laughs> some are being rehabilitated, like Stitch behind us here, mm -hmm. um, the pit bull. Um, there's a couple dogs in kennel that are being worked on. So we do it all. Yeah. I mean, it seems like everybody's really happy. Look how peaceful they all are. And some people get scared that th their dog can't be around other dogs because they're too aggressive or they're you know, too defensive or whatever. Uh, there's actually a few dogs here like that that were like that. Um, w the way that we acclimate them to the space is very important. We don't just throw them right into the kennel. Uh, it can cause a lot of problems. Like the new kid at school, right? They get ganged up on. Mm -hmm. So if a dog is stressed out about a situation like this, we have to kind of take it easy with them. So we do it slowly and gradually, and they acclimate. I mean, people who have aggressive <clears throat> dogs, and those are, those are the really challenging ones, the ones that get returned to the shelters because they can't uh, find a, a forever home because people just can't manage that. Right. There are solutions, aren't there? Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of our thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So if, if, if I brought you a dog that was just um, dysfunctional, for lack of a better word, how do you evaluate and how do you, how do you work out a program that's going to make a solution? Great question. Um, and, and by the way, I mean, I, I came on board with Eric. I met Eric in 2014 over a glass of wine at, at a point in my life where I needed a, a career change. So uh, Eric and I started the company in 2014 and, and came together and I, I learned how to train dogs with Eric and then brought my own skill set in. Um, and over the years, I've been a dog lover too. I have two of my own. They're not here today. They're trail running with my wife right now. But over the years, what I've learned and help people understand because we get people that will show up and they're they're really at their their limit. They don't want to lose the dog. They've rescued a dog. They've done a wonderful thing by rescuing a dog, but now they're in a situation where they don't know what to do. And so one of the first things we say to them is, "Look, let us help you learn how to manage what you have first, so you can feel safe, confident, uh, so the dog can understand that you're going to be the one that's going to step in and be the one that they can depend on." So the management of those uh, situations are key because. Most people will get a rescue and go, well, let's go to the dog park. And they throw the dog in the dog park and the dog gets attacked or attacks someone else and then, or bites somebody. Because they think that's a great way to start. Well, what we want to do first is let's spend time building a relationship between you and your dog through management of who that dog is. So if I have a dog that's ag uh, aggressive with people, okay, sticking up for that dog in a way, instead of having someone come in and go, hi, buddy, how are you? And that dog biting somebody you're allowed to manage it and say, hey, actually, uh, my guy's not real comfortable with that. We're working on it, hang tight. You know? So the management of aggression and reactivity, there's many ways to do it, but helping the person understand that A, it's okay to say, I can't do that. And then they go, ah, oh, okay. And then teaching them the skills on how to handle the dog. We use obedience for that. We use a lot of leash work. We use different tools and different ways to get the dog to, to think and, and respond. Uh, and that's really what we want. We want a dog that thinks. We're not here to uh, not let the dog experience that. It's all great stuff. You know, we got to take a quick break, but yeah. when we come back, I want to learn more about obedience training. Sure. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got more Animal Zone. Hi, I'm Annie O'Donnell, and this is Colleen. And we do recommend brushing your dog's teeth on a daily basis. And so we just wanted to show you a quick demonstration on how to do so. Open up wide. And we try to get those the little services. Here we go. Good job, Flash. <laughs> the toothpaste comes in beef, chicken, as well as fish flavor. Yum. <laughs> hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. 
Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. And we're back here at Canine Solutions in San Inez with the owners, Eric and Justin. And uh, you guys are so full of great information. Uh, I, I'm thinking for our viewers who want to know, okay, how do you create value to a dog? How do you make yourself valuable to a dog? Uh, generally, we try to get our clients to follow two basic rules. The first thing is nothing for free. And I mean nothing. So attention, affection, uh, food, Everything but really water, toys, because what toys um, needs to have some value to it. So if those things are freely given, just willy nilly, you know, hey, here's a good boy, here's some treats, then the value of those things diminishes. And the second rule that we try to get installed is all those good things come from you. So then your value goes up, and the dog pays more attention to you. If you do that consistently, and really, if you just follow those two rules, you'll see big changes in a very short period of time. Interesting, because I, I know, uh, for example, with my pit bull, Mikey, I'm generally the one who feeds mm -hmm. Mikey. And uh, we have a little routine where, uh, you know, he'll, he'll sit there drooling, <laughs> pit bulls do, and I'm putting his food into his dish. Right. He'll actually start talking. He, he, and it's the only time he becomes verbal at all. He sort of just is mumbling away, like I do when I'm ready to eat. But um, then when I go over to where he sits down to eat, I ask him to sit, yeah. and I wait till, for the sitting. And then I go, wait, and wait, and I put the food down, and I continue to him wait, and he looks at my hand, and he's watching my eye. And then when I'm ready, I say, no more, let's go. And then he eats. Perfect. Yeah. And, and he, it seems like it's a good routine. Now I assume that that's like building up some kind of chore he has to do in order to get rewarded. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, and, and to that point, I think it's a really great thing to understand is the main, one of the overarching kind of themes that we talk about is impulse control. Mm -hmm. Is really what we're teaching these guys because just like kids, dogs have no impulse control. So what you're doing is a fantastic thing. You're, you're taking a small moment. What does it take, 30 seconds, a minute? to say to this dog, to your dog, I just need you to have a little impulse control. By the way, I've got your food for you again. I went out and did the hunt. I'm gonna provide for you. You can at least just show me a little bit of impulse control and you're gonna get the goods. And then, boom. And before you know it, if you do that in all ways of training, you have a dog that practices impulse control. And that can um, be one of the biggest challenges to bring into focus for people is the reason dogs are jumping or chasing or doing all that stuff, squirrel, whatever it is, it's because of the impulse, right? So they're dogs, they're gonna have an impulse. It's how well can you control it in the moment and when can you say it's they're doing their dog thing. So you have you have treats, which we were talking about earlier, and, and, and treats, if they're if they're high value treats, something that tastes really good to them, you know, they'll they'll they're really excited, but how do you reward them for doing what? I mean if you want to give them a treat but you want them to do something, do you have them do a trick? Do you have them slide down? We're not big into tricks I'd much rather have obedience and control and have my client I mean the real reason people come to us is because they have issues with their dog they don't really need us to teach them to how to sit and down and come and things like that even though that's integral to what we do um, it's very important to be able to give the dog something to do other than what it really wants to do in the moment because it's usually something we don't want it to do right so um, we use the obedience rather than a trick to give the dog some focus and impulse control, as Justin was saying. Um, if you can get really good impulse control from your dog, your life with your dog becomes enjoyable, enjoyable. instead of stressful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's really where most of our clients come from, from a point of stress. Like, I don't know what to do with this dog anymore. So what they do is they placate the dog. Here, here's a toy for nothing. Here's some food for nothing. Right? So if I put a little structure behind that, now I've got some focus. It's all I want to begin with is give me some focus. Focus on me. 
Well, this place is amazing. Nice. I, I'm so glad we had a chance to come up yeah. and see Canine Solutions. You guys are doing Thanks. great work. And uh, we hope we come back again. Maybe we'll see some more about dogs. Let's do it. Love to have you. Appreciate it. Thank Alrighty. you so much. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got more Animal Zone. I'm Dean Noble from Santa Barbara's Treasury Ealings Park, and you are watching Animal Zone. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We from the get-go established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, as we enter the animal zone. Today we're at the Santa Barbara Bird Sanctuary with founder Jamie McLeod and the pet psychic Laura Stinchfield. Yay! And we're going to the birds. Yay! Yeah! Well, we're super excited you're here today and are looking forward to introducing you to all my feathered friends. You guys are old friends as well, aren't you? We are! Laura actually has a blue and gold named Samora who's been to stay with us before. Uh huh. So she speaks bird. And she loved it here when she stayed here. Well, it's kind of like party yeah, parrots. I, love. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Now, my little friend here, Houdini. Yes. Is, is uh, I mean, he's so cute. Now, tell me a little bit about the history of Houdini. Where'd he come from? Bobby Houdini um, belonged to a family, and cockatoos are very cuddly and sweet and affectionate, but it's all about them. And they're not happy when it can't be all about them. And the family had two children with health issues and Bobby Houdini wasn't happy about that because mom was real busy trying to take care of their needs. So oftentimes people find it very difficult to fulfill their very complex social needs because these are flock creatures in the wild. So they are not accustomed to being separated from their family. And so when it's not about them, they scream at 135 decibels. It takes about 105 to damage the human ear. I'm partially deaf. What? <laughs> huh? <laughs> really funny, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. So Buddha, I can trace his history about 60 years. Wow. And at that time, there was no captive breeding of this species in the wild. I mean, in captivity. So I'm quite sure he was trapped in the wild. Mm. So Do I'd you be want to ask him about that? Yeah, I'd be very interested in yeah. what he has to tell you. He's seen a lot. Buddha, honey, did you hear what we want to ask you? Do you remember back, like, were you ever in the wild? He said he lived in a place where there were mountains, lots of trees and rivers. He said that they went to this place that was like a big watering hole that they would always go to and a net came down on all of them. They're indigenous to New Guinea, the subspecies. Oh, is New Guinea mountainous like that? It can be, it yes. Can be. Uh huh. And so then what happened to you, do you know? They put you in dark crates 
He said and he was in a crate with a mean bird that he didn't like and that bird bit him. He said they grabbed him by his legs and they would fling him. Like why would they ever do that? Like grab by the... Trapping methods yeah. can be very cruel and inhumane. Oh, we are so sorry that that happened to you. We are so sorry. Do you know that you're going to be safe for your whole life? Do you understand that? Yeah? <laughs> You've been told that? They actually, when I finished nursing him back to oh. health, they said, well, we would like you to keep him forever. Mm. So oh, nice. I don't think I'm gonna live forever like you, but I will watch over you. Yes, I will. Yeah. You're a good boy. Well, <laughs> that's great. Well, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we've got more Animal Zone right here. Stay tuned. the essence of life, flowing from Mother Earth, gathering essential minerals, trace elements and vitality as it journeys to the surface, collected fresh and pure from springs around the world, each one as unique as a fingerprint. The world's best bottled waters are waiting for you at bottledwaterweb.com. Well, today we're going into something a little bit different here on Animal Zone. We're going to be talking with a painter who specializes in animal drawings, artwork, and uh, we're really thrilled to have Zoe Elliott with us, along with her dog, Chaco. And Chaco's, uh, I guess, little pet here, a little duck, right? Yeah, yeah. His favorite toy. Gotta have it with him. I noticed that uh, he's in the, in the background picture. Yeah, he's had, this was his first toy, and he's actually had him throughout the span that we've had him for about five five years now so it's it's the only toy that's lasted the entire time that's pretty good because usually toys get <laughs> shredded up especially I know with all a... of his other toys but not this one <laughs> and that sort of brings us to the whole point of a great picture like this one you did of Chaco where you've captured him and his toy forever yes and his crown <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah this would be like a, a royal style pet portrait where you have the quintessential victorian frame and the crown it's just kind of all humorous i just wanted to do something special for uh, my parents for uh, christmas you went to santa barbara city college and you studied art there mm -hmm. and uh, and then you've actually managed to start creating commercial art that you sell, which mm -hmm. is great. Did you focus on animals? Was that a sort of a passion of yours? Um, no, it wasn't until just a few years ago, actually, until recently that I decided to integrate my passions for animals and art. And it actually happened in 2016. I was in need of a Christmas present for my, my mom and my stepdad. And I, I just thought to myself, what do we love more than our beloved Pup Chaco? So I tried my hand at painting him and I was actually quite uh, surprised at how much I, I liked doing it and how much I enjoyed it and how it turned out. So, um, and they absolutely loved it. It really was a heartfelt gift for them. So after that, um, I started getting a few inquiries about pet portraits and I decided, you know, maybe I should start doing this for a living. I could I could have business off of it. I, I really enjoy doing it, so. Yeah, do you work with animals like hot chocolate right here or do you get photographs and work from photographs? I only work from photographs just because my, my style of art, uh, ever since I was young, I found I had a knack for photorealism. Mm -hmm. So I, I only work from photographs. It's a little difficult to do from, from real life because they're moving, especially dogs um, or, or just animals in general. And yeah, it, it's kind of challenging sometimes when I don't have like the best reference photo. I'll have to go around and, and use different reference photos, but... Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah. So, so working working from a photo is is easier, and then I guess maybe once in a while you get to meet the real animal in person, yeah, so you get yeah. a little bit of the personality. Yeah. Every every dog and every cat has their own unique personality. It's hard to sometimes get that across. Like I mean, I can definitely pick up the personality mm -hmm. in Chaco there, which is exactly totally. like he is there. You know, <laughs> he's kind of uh, full of life and fun, and he's really proud of his duck. <laughs> yeah, I really try to, in every painting, I think it, it really means a lot to the owner to completely embody the uh, dog's personality or the animal's personality. Um, and so I ask, you know, what's their favorite toy? Do they like to be indoors or outdoors more? Um, you know, do they have like any 
hobbies or you know not really hobbies but just uh, habits that they that they like that they would like me to integrate. How long does it take to do a painting like this? This one took 40 to 50 hours. Wow. My digital paintings that I do like um, like this one here. This is my first cat that I've done, and I'd like to do more, oh. more cats and reptiles or horses or anything. But um, so far, I've just done dogs. But this one, like digital portraits, only take me 15 to 24 hours, I'd say. Mm -hmm. A little less time. Um, what kind of things will happen with that cat picture? I mean, you're, you're in the process right now. Uh -huh. So what things will you be adding or changing in there? Well, I'm gonna do another detail sweep of the fur, just kind of make it look still like paint, but a little bit more uh, realistic like the photograph I received. And um, I'm just gonna add in the background, and her name is Athena, so I was thinking about like, adding in some sort of Greek goddess element to it, you know, um, and perhaps even a little collar with a tag because I think they really um, enjoy when it's when it has the, their animal's name on it. It really makes it personal for them, so. Wow, that's a great idea. Yeah. Now, you showed me, uh, you're, you're working on, you have a picture which, uh, of yeah. a dog which is getting ready for the client. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna get to see this before the client gets to yeah. see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, pretty special. Um, wow. this, is, uh, this is an oil painting. This one took about 40 to 50 hours as well. It's a blonde lab. And the client was um, pretty quirky. He He's just like, I want you to have fun with it and just creatively express yourself, make it something that you would hang in your house. And I've always been really interested in Japanese culture, so I was like, you know what, I, I'm gonna make it something really interesting, like a meditating dog, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, like I said, took about 40 to 50 hours and was my most challenging piece because it's not in a dog's anatomy to sit cross-legged. So I had to have found some um, reference photos, a few different reference photos online, but it ended up working out pretty well. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, just with the uh, the background's a little bit more involved as well with the candles and everything, but. What's your dream going forward? What do you want to, what would be your ideal size and, and subject matter if you could? I would just like to keep painting people's animals. Give me everything you've got and yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy doing what I do here, so. Wow, that's great, Zoe. Well, if people want to know more about Zoe Elliott, you have a website, right? Yeah, so um, you can look at my pet portraits on zoeelliotart.com. My Instagram is z.pet.portraits, and my Facebook is Pet Portraits by Zoe. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for showing thank and you. sharing these with us today. Of course, my pleasure. Really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got more Animal Zone coming up. Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour, Renaud. Happiness? It's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries, especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long-term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true. Never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine. Time. So glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. Did I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity.
When I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend